Hi, and welcome to the Ichigo Abroad podcast. My name is Sophia. I can be found on both Instagram and Ravelry as Ichigo Knitter. Um, I have a blog where you can find this podcast along with all of my spam photos and ramblings about living in Japan called dreamingworldsaway.blogspot.com. This past week has been kind of crazy for me. Um, I mentioned last time that I was going into midterms week and now it's finally over. <laughs> um, I had three midterms this past week and so I basically spent the week in crash crazy student mode. Um, I had a Japanese exam, I had a history exam, and a film exam. Um, and they were spread out through the week, which was fine. Um, no complaining. It's, you know, just usual student. Oh. But, um, during that time, I was also kind of avoiding doing work, maybe. I <laughs> did manage to get some knitting done this past week. Um, not very much, particularly. I did, um, have a lot of stress and studying and adventures, but, you know, it was interesting. <laughs> um, besides midterms, I did go out and do some fun things. Um, one evening my roommate slash glorious friend slash knitting buddy, um, and I went into, where did we go? We went into Umeda, which is in Osaka, um, which it's just a section of Osaka, kind of in the same way that if you went to Tokyo, you could go to Shibuya or Akihabara or Harajuku. They're all just different sections of the large city. And so we went to Emeda in Osaka, which has a lot of great shopping. Um, and we went there in particular because my friend wanted to go to a Ghibli museum there. Um, if you don't know, uh, Studio Ghibli is a huge film company here. They do mostly children's animated films, but... Um, it's, they've really hit with many different generations of people. They've been extremely popular. Um, Studio Ghibli's film Spirited Away actually won the Academy Award for Best Animated Picture in 2001. Um, so the films are highly acclaimed and they're really beautiful and artistic. Um, I highly recommend them. I have right here actually, this is probably my favorite of the Studio Ghibli films. This is Howl's Moving Castle. Um, they're all, they've all been re-recorded in English by professional English voice actors. Actually, Christian Bale voices Howell in the English version of this film. Um, but they're beautiful films. Some of them are completely made up. Some of them are based on novels, such as Howl's Moving Castle is actually based on the novel Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wayne-Jones, which is a fantastic read for, um, anyone, I think. I loved it. Um, and they recently, a few years ago, when I say recently, I mean like four years ago, came out with a film called, um, The Borrower Arietti, based off of The Borrowers. Um, they do a lot of really beautiful, beautiful pieces. Um, I highly recommend looking them up and checking them out. Anyways, tangent. Um, so we wanted to go to the store that sold Studio Ghibli products in Umeda because we're both... Studio Ghibli Freaks. Actually, you can see on the the screen right there, all of those things are images of Studio Ghibli films that um, my friend bought. <laughs> There's actually some on my side here, too. And, like, example, some of them are, like, postcards. Like, this is a postcard for Nazca of the Valley of the Wind. There's, they're also, the larger ones are folders. Um, but we kind of have epic decoration adventures in here sometimes. So we went there and at first we couldn't actually find the Ghibli store. We originally, it was supposed to be, um, it's a part of a larger store called Kitty Land, which encompasses a lot of different children's toy brands. Kind of like, they have a lot of Snoopy products. They carry a lot of Disney products. They carry a lot of the Dakuma, which is an extremely popular product here. Um, so we originally went to the Kitty Land, and when we got to the Kitty Land, we <laughs> couldn't find the Ghibli part. And so, uh, my friend actually went up and was like, do you know where the Ghibli store is? And they were like, oh yeah, it's actually in a separate section. So we actually had to, like, 
walk all around this area and finally we found it um hooray i got this cute little it's technically a phone chain but i just hang it on my wall it is this little cat Gigi from a film called Kiki's Delivery Service and Gigi is holding a strawberry which is totally my thing um and a little thing of strawberry jam so I bought that and that's really all I bought but I love it it's really cute anyways um yeah so that was a lot of fun we afterwards went in to a donut chain here <laughs> I miss donuts um <laughs> I'm going through like cider donut withdrawal. I saw when everyone went to Rhinebeck, you know, my mother, uh, Saratoga Knitting, was mercilessly sending me photos like, oh, look at this, I'm at Rhinebeck. And I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> I love Rhinebeck, guys. Um, so I've been going through cider donut withdrawals, um, Rhinebeck cider donuts, any cider donuts. <laughs> I like cider donuts. So we went to this donut chain in Japan known as Mr. Donut. And Mr. Donut has very unique donuts. Um, they have your general flavor of donuts, and they have donuts that are kind of made up of little donuts to form a ring. Those are really cool. Um, but what I was really excited about was that they have a new donut product at Mr. Donut called Mr. Croissant. Mr. Croissant is a form of, I guess it's like a cronut, in America, you know, it's like the, the donut croissant mix, and um, they had an apple flavored one and a maple flavored one, and naturally, those were the two flavors I chose as a Vermont college student. Um, they were delicious. I love them. I love them, love them, love them. Um, so that was really fun. I really, I love trying out stores in Japan. They have incredible varieties of flavor here, which really... I appreciate and enjoy because as a person who loves trying all sorts of crazy different things, um, it's really fun and it's all delicious, you know, it, like, even if something sounds crazy, it's usually delicious. Um, anyways, again, food tangent. I like food. Um, knitting. So, like I said, this pack week was midterm, so not much knitting happened. Some did. Um, I worked on my socks. I finished whoops, sock number one. I haven't woven in the ends yet, so please ignore that. But I finished it all up. I love it. It fits perfect. I, it's really great. Um, again, this is the Electric Avenue pattern by Sarah Stevens from O Loops. And the yarn is Dancing Dog Dye Works in Zen Garden and Stormy. And the second sock is coming along, I actually, yesterday, I spent most of my day doing nothing but knitting, um, so I cranked out the foot and now I'm working on the heel. Um, hopefully, I'd like to be done this week with this, actually. That's my goal, but we'll see. This week should be lighter on actual academic work because we just had midterms. If I haven't said that enough, we just had midterms. I don't like midterms. <laughs> um... <laughs> So that is that. Um, I have a bunch of sock yarn just sitting in my drawer waiting to be knit, so that's why I'm kind of like, woo, let's get the socks done. Um, let's see, the shawl of epicness is continuing. This is again the geology shawl by Boho Knits. Um, I literally hadn't worked on this till like, I don't know, yesterday. I like sat down and I started doing a few more rows, so it doesn't look much different than last time, but it has, I promise it has grown a few rows. Um, it's just getting so long that it like, every row takes a bit longer, but that's okay because it's so squishy and I love it. Um, but this section is almost done and once this section's done, I think hopefully um, I'll power through the rest of the sections. Um, I say that now, but I'll probably be working on this for like the next two months. Whatever. Still fun. Um, I'm also still working on my little stuffy, but he hasn't advanced at all. I didn't really have time to sit down and do any tiny knitting at all this week, so we still just got four little fingers, you know. <laughs> now that I have more time, I can sit down and actually focus on him. Um... 
I do have an FO this week, um, which didn't exist last week, literally. I think midterms broke my soul. Um, I, I've always wanted to try designing a pattern. I always thought it would be kind of fun just to be like, oh, I did something. Um, and I could never really come up with anything. And then, of course, night before one of my midterms, I'm lying in bed and all of a sudden I'm like, this is it. <laughs> so the next day after my final, I ran to a craft store, bought yarn, needles, came back and started knitting. Um, so, I knit a, I guess it's a, a slouchy hat of my own design. I kind of went nuts. Um, I knit this all this past week, literally, and that's not a good thing because that's time I could have been studying. Whatever! Um, I really like how it came out. This yarn is epic, actually. Let me, should have. This yarn is, this is totally Japanese yarn. Um, it's called Sonomono, which if they're using it the way I think they're using it, it means that thing, but it might just be for decorative wording. And, um, it's alpaca and wool. It is 60% wool and 40% alpaca. It is gloriously squishy. I love it. I love it. It's so, so squishy. Um, that's a thing about me. I really love soft yarn. It's glorious. <laughs> So I used this for the hat. This is actually a bulky weight, which I didn't realize at first. Um, and then I had to actually look up and find out the weight of it because I couldn't, f I can't actually find the weight on here. I'm sure it's, I just can't see it. Um, but it's a bulky yarn. So I used bulky yarn with this hat um, and I love it. Um, so I've written it up. My mom is test knitting it for me because I can't do math decreases, <laughs> so I'm afraid I might have messed something up and then I'm just ignoring it on my hat. But it's just going to be a free pattern, so I don't mind showing it at all. There's nothing nothing that I'm going to hide from it. It's just a free pattern out of Sophia's spur of the moment midterm exam missing out on. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited with it, actually. I was, I've never made something, really, of my own design before. And... It was exciting, and it's Japanese yarn! <laughs> um, but, so that's my only FO this week that didn't exist last week. It was my Sophia's avoiding midterms. Yay! But, yeah, it's fun, and I think I'll hopefully, like, next week put it up on Ravelry. Just, again, free pattern. It's not anything worth writing home about. But, I'm excited about it. <laughs> um, okay, let's, let's see what else. Oh, um, I think I mentioned this on Instagram, I can find it, but I, when I went to the craft store the other day, I tend to do this now, um, I've decided that I really want to learn to sew. Um, I see, I follow a lot of people on Instagram that sew, and I love what I see, I'm like, oh, I really like making things, which I think is why I like, I love knitting so much, is I love being able to create something with my own hands, and Sewing's one of those things I've just, no one's ever taught me, so I don't really, I have no idea how to sew, but I really, really want to. So I've decided that when I get home next summer, that's going to be my goal, is to um, sit down and start learning how to sew. And in order to give myself incentive, I've started buying fabric at the craft store here in Japan. Um, so I bought this cute kitty cat fabric, it's just got a bunch of different cats on it and I bought this little Alice in Wonderland pattern which I really loved I couldn't let this go um so hopefully when I eventually maybe know how to sew I could turn these into something um but so these are basically incentive to make myself really go out um check out some books um sit down and try to learn to sew. Um, I also bought a hand sewing kit, like, so it has all the instructions and all the fabric you need to make this little thing. Um, so eventually being able to understand how this works would be really exciting. Um, one of the difficult things is the pattern is entirely in Japanese, obviously, because I, oh, I wrote that up there, I was just translating. Um, <laughs> 
but I don't know craft terms in Japanese. Like, I mean, I know how to say I knit or knitting and stuff like that, but I don't know sewing terms in Japanese, so I need to look that up. But I decided that was going to be my incentive for now. Um, if anybody has any recommendations for books to read for beginners who know nothing about sewing, um, I would really love to know because I really, I really seriously want to learn how to sew. Um, and that's that. Um, so I opened a Ravelry group for the podcast, um, that you're all, come on, come on over, you're welcome to join, say hi, um, I love talking to people, so, um, I mentioned last time that if you had any questions, feel free to ask me, and there was a question from Tanya Marie, hey, um, she asked, what are craft stores like in Japan? Um, is knitting quite popular? And with all the bus and travel I've mentioned, do I see people doing much handiwork while I'm out and about? Um, so I thought I'd talk about that this week because conveniently I did go, well, I went to the craft store the other day, but I actually went into Kyoto the other day to go to like a really fancy yarn shop. So um, craft shops here are really cute. I really like them. Um, the, the major, like, regularly cheap, easy, accessible craft store in the area is called ABC Craft. Um, I think you can find ABC Craft stores, like, anywhere in Japan. Um, and they're great. They're, there's always, like, sewing classes going on. There's always a ton of people sitting down at the tables working on all these projects. Um, they have walls and walls on walls of really every craft imaginable. It's really um, any craft you do. I feel is very accessible here. Um, they have tons of sewing, lots of beautiful, beautiful fabrics that I keep staring at and possibly buying. Um, they have awesome kits. I One of the things I really, really love about Japanese craft stores is how many kits they have, um, which for someone who's looking into starting, um, getting into a certain kind of craft, I think it's really cool. I was actually, when I was there the other day, looking at their section for um, felting things, um, and they had all these kits, kits for felting little animals, like little cats and dogs and things, and they have, it was it, really cool, and they have lots of books in the section with that craft for how to do this craft, and all, it's, um, really, really fun to just, like, walk through the aisles. They have lots of, um, cross-stitching patterns. They have, um, again, the felting. They have buttons. They have shelves on shelves of yarn. Um, tons of books on whatever craft you're interested in, you can really find at ABC Craft. It's really great. Um, I like going there. It's really, it's totally decently priced, too. Like, um, Everything is really accessible for, like, college students like myself who don't really have any money. <laughs> so that's, for me, is really cool. I really like that kind of craft store. Um, as for if knitting is very popular here, as I understand it, it is. Um, there is, I think, a growing amount of knitters. Um, in that, I will talk about... The Kyoto adventure I went on. Um, there is a knitting magazine here. Um, it's called Amirisu, um, but what it is, it is a Japanese magazine. Everything is written in Japanese and in English, and they work with a lot of foreign designers and um, bring in to Japan a lot of um, foreign imported yarns such as Madeline Tosh, Brooklyn Tweed, Quince Co, um, and bring them to the Japanese market. Um, they have lots of beautiful, gorgeous designs, and they have, they actually, Amirisu, if you're interested, has a Ravelry group, um, and non-Japanese speakers are more than welcome. They have, excuse me while I adjust myself, um, they have a email list, um, you can go subscribe to that email list. They'll email you with updates on, oh, we've got new patterns coming out. Here's the new magazine is coming out. Check this out. Um, it's really fun. 
And so I've been following Amirisu from back home for a long time now. Um, actually, again, because my mom, Saratoga Knitting, got me into Amirisu because she's like, check this out. And I was like, ah, this is awesome. So when I, about a week ago, actually, I was like, wait a minute, they have a new magazine out. I can totally get it. So they have um, their own online website. Um, again, if you look up Amirisu on Google, it'll take you right there. Um, and it's a fantastic website. They, if you come to Japan or you're living in Japan, um, you can order lots of imported yarn from their website. Um, you can also get their magazine. Um, they also have an Etsy shop for people who don't live in Japan. So if you're interested in getting your hands on one of their magazines, just go to their Etsy shop, which they have a link to on their website. Um, so this is what their magazine looks like. Now, Craft magazines here, I found, are basically books. Um, they call them magazines, but they're really, they're beautiful. They're, you're getting a lot for your money. Um, so I got this really quickly in the mail. They were really awesome, and I love it. It's a little squirrel. Um, I actually really want to knit this. But it's beautifully, beautifully formatted. It's really high quality. Um, the imagery in it, like, just look at that. It's just gorgeous. Um, it's beautiful and really great because, again, it's, everything is in both English and Japanese. Let me see if I can find a good example. So if you can't read Japanese, you are still able to have no problem reading this book. And it's really fantastic. And the patterns that they have, um, that Amirisu produces are beautiful, beautiful patterns. There is one pattern in particular. Let me get to it. Here we go. This. I am dying to knit. This is called Trist. It is designed by Melanie Berg. And it's gorgeous. Um, I just, yeah, I love it. But I love the photography in this too. Really, I don't know, the photography really just brings out the shawl. So back to my Kyoto knitting adventure. Um, Amirisu in September opened up a new shop in Kyoto called Walnut. And so my friend, the roommate slash knitting buddy over there, um, decided to go take an adventure and try to find it. Um, wasn't easy. <laughs> We're not the brightest bubbles, um, and I still don't fully know, I don't usually deal with, um, streets, like, navigating specific streets and stuff, like, I mean, I get places, but I, I can't really explain how it is I get there. I managed to end up places, um, via train systems and stuff, but this was... Um, significantly far away from the actual train station you had to get off at. So <laughs> we probably wandered around Kyoto for like an hour, lost out of our minds. <laughs> but it was fun. <laughs> we had to ask several different shopkeepers if they had any idea what the directions meant. And they all pointed us in different places. <laughs> so we were all having an adventure. Eventually though, we did make it and it was awesome. Um, the shop is very tiny. It's mm, probably actually about the size of my dorm room. This physical room that I'm in right now is probably the actual size of the store. Um, but it was walls of gorgeous, gorgeous yarn, and the people were absolutely wonderful. Um, when I went there, there were two women working there, and then there was a couple who... Um, the wife was a designer, and she was sitting there knitting, and her husband was just chatting. And the two women that were working there were just, they were the most wonderful people. Um, and we were like, you know, we were talking with them. We were like, yeah, you know, we're exchange students. We're from Kansai Gaidai. And one of them, she was like, oh my gosh, we had a magazine order from Kansai Gaidai this week. And I was like, yeah, that was me. She's like freaked out. And so we were like freaking out over that. And it was really fun. Um, so we decided we wanted fancy yarn, which is why we went. So I bought Madeline Tosh. Um, I bought Madeline Tosh before. But only to give away in a swap. I've never actually had for myself a skein of Madeline Tosh. So I went kind of crazy and I got Madeline Tosh Pashmina, 
which is a 75% merino wool, 15% silk, 10% cashmere blend. Um, it's wonderful. The colorway is called Cove, and actually, one of the two women that was working there, she was um, working on a sweater, and it was in this colorway, and I was like, I need this colorway. Um, it's really more pale blue and a little bit of gray and brown mixed in. I'm, it's coming out a wee bit weird on the camera, but that's okay. It's fantastic, and I love it, and I've just been like, admiring it. I like put it on my shelf like it's a decoration. I'm not ready to it yet. It's too perfect. Um, but yeah, I got this. Um, my friend also got Madeline Toss. She's making a Hitchhiker by Martina Ben out of it right now. It's really exciting. <laughs> and yeah. But <laughs> it was a great experience. Um, I really love the things that Amirisu does. Um, and the their store that they opened up is adorable. If you ever happen to be in Kyoto for any reason, I highly, highly recommend checking it out. It was a wonderful experience. I can't say enough nice things about um, the people there, um, the yarn they were carrying, the shop itself is adorable, um, and the company. They're really, they're really great. Um, I feel like they, they're just, they're really great at pulling in, you know, Japanese and English in their magazines and in their um, their patterns. They have them in both English and Japanese and their patterns are beautiful. Um, I highly recommend going and checking out all of the patterns they put out on Ravelry. It's really fantastic. I love it. Um, so that's about it for craft shops for today. I know it was kind of messy all over the place, but I kind of, even if I make a list, which I promise I did, I have a list right here. Kind of all over the place, sorry. Um, <laughs> But it was fantastic. It's amazing. Um, I love craft stores here. They're fantastic. Um, oh, I think I might have... Yes. Um, I forgot to answer one part of Tanya's question. Sorry, I got you. Um, do I ever see people crafting when I'm out? Um, I don't, actually. For the most part, on trains, people are doing one of three things. Um, they are on the phone. They're reading a book or they are hardcore out of sleep. Um, people, for the most part, sleep on trains here. It's kind of funny. I I applaud them. I wish I could do that. <laughs> but I don't actually really see much crafting happening outside of the craft store. Um, a lot more of just phone, book, sleeping. It's definitely something you can do in a small space because um, really public transportation here, usually if it's busy, you don't really have any move, like room. So you just kind of do what you do to pass five minutes, but you don't really, I don't really think you have really the space. I don't think I'd be able to actually really knit while I'm, I mean, I suppose I could. I'm just um, not that adventurous. <laughs> I'd probably drop everything and make a mess and people would judge me and I'd be like, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> I haven't, um, unfortunately. I think it'd be really cool if I saw someone knitting or doing cross-stitch or crocheting. I'd be like, yeah! But, unfortunately, I haven't seen that yet, um, but I will keep an eye out for it. So, last thing I want to talk about today, um, is it's Halloween this week! Woohoo! Um, uh, I haven't actually been trick-or-treating since, like, back in high school, and I did that because I was doing it with my little cousins. Um, <laughs> it was fun. I'm not denying that. Um, but here in Japan, Halloween is actually a huge thing. Um, things have been out decoration-wise since literally the 1st of October. It's fantastic. There's Halloween signs everywhere. There's Halloween candy. There's Halloween-themed cakes and Halloween-flavored things. It's everywhere, and it's awesome. It gets me really excited about Halloween. And at Kansai Gaidai, my university, um, school is closed on Friday the 31st. Ooh. And instead of classes, we have a school-wide festival. And apparently, this is a huge deal. Um, and everybody dresses up in costumes. So all of my friends and I have been, like, scrambling around getting costumes. And what I decided on, actually, two of my friends and I are all dressing up as Sailor Scouts from Sailor Moon. So I, let's see, I have a picture for reference in my Sailor Moon 
schedule a book because Sailor Moon is awesome. Um, <laughs> I am dressing up as Sailor Jupiter. That's her. So I got my costume. Thought I'd show it. Ta-da! It's really fun. I'm really excited. Um, so on this Friday, I will be running around with my friends being a goofball as a sailor cow. I'm excited. Um, so hopefully, I'm sure it'll be really fun. It's supposed to be a big deal. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. Mostly, you know, no school. Woohoo! <laughs> so that's it for this week, I think. Um, again, there is a Ravelry group for Ichigo Abroad. Um, please feel free to come on over and join us. Um, this podcast can be found on YouTube under Ichigo Abroad and on my blog, Knitting Worlds Away, or Knitting Worlds Away, Dreaming Worlds Away dot blogspot dot com. Um, I hope you have guys have a great week and a happy Halloween. Bye.